Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave answering questions from tested patrons. Uh, if you'd like to know how to become a tested patron, there is a link in the comments below. Today's question comes from patron Michael T. And he says, I am here with my painted up black series helmet. I do believe that when I finally finish my Mandalorian uh, Beskar armor costume that this is going to be the helmet I wear. Um, yeah. It's a lot more comfortable than the Inovos right now. And I mean, I'm gonna put some padding in here and everything, but I dig this helmet. Uh, okay, so today's question comes from Michael T. Being a fan of The Mandalorian, he says, and talking to your friends at ILM, oh, he's not a fan, he's talking about me being a fan. Okay, being a fan of The Mandalorian, talking with your friends at ILM, George Lucas's effects studio, Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, what are your thoughts on the volume? What are the ILM guys thoughts? Is it a game changer for making TV or movies? Or just another evolution of technology that ILM has been on the forefront for a lot of years? Well, it can be both. Um, the volume that Michael refers to is the environment in which they shoot the Mandalorian, which for the uninitiated is actually mind blowing. And Michael, this, this here, and herein lies my answer. It is an absolutely groundbreaking piece of technology allowed by the radically increased speed of computers and GPUs and the many parts and components they use to process data on the fly. Um, it is an absolute game changer. So uh, what the volume is, is a, uh, an environment in which to shoot movies that is unlike any other environment before. So uh, if you've ever watched any behind the scenes movie making, you have seen actors with a background of green behind them. That is a green screen. The reason they use the green is because when they shoot them, they can then take the character that they've filmed against the green and plop them into any environment they want. This is an old technology, well-known. Green screen, blue screen, you can even use other colors. Uh, but these have been the ways since time immemorial that we have uh, taken an actor and put them in space or in a jungle or in some other environment. Um, and it can be done on video, on film, and it's been done on television and the movies. You can do it live. There's all, like, it is a known technology. So that idea of taking a character where they're correct and real on the film's camera, but everything behind them is not, is a, a, a sort of classic construction of special effects. Um, and it goes back to even the silent era when you had backdrops. Uh, there's even uh, there's even double exposures done way back in the day where they took a character, exposed one background with a black spot where the character was, and then re-exposed with the character in there. Yeah. But what the volume does, so it, every way that I've just described that is a multi-step process. You film an actor against a background, then you go and use post-processing technology. Uh, it used to be analog, now it's digital to replace their background. What the volume does is it puts the background in the camera live. So the volume picture, um, I think the best way to picture it is a, a hemispherical dome that is the shooting stage. Except that the inside of, so picture that I, you and I in this video are surrounded by a huge hemispherical dome with, I don't know, 20 foot ceilings and maybe it's 60 feet uh, in diameter. I haven't been to the actual volume, so I don't know its size. Um, now picture that the inside of this dome is all an, L a, an LED screen, right? Like, like you've seen on the billboards that wrap around Times Square, that this is a compound curved LED screen. Okay. And you can project anything you want on it. You can project a background, right? Okay, so that right in there in, of itself is amazing. So the camera sees the actor and a background on them. Which means that when you look at the Mandalorian in the frame, the reflections in his helmet reflect the world he's in. This has never been possible before. Really, you, the, there are digital artists who have digitally taken the green in reflection and replaced it with the world. This does it absolutely live with real lighting effects. Sorry, let's bring it back in here. Um, but the volume goes one step further than that. Because if you simply projected the world, the background, I don't know, the, intern, the interior of the Moss Aspo Cantina, let's say, um, and it was static, it would look great for individual shots. But when the camera moves, you would be able to see that the, the world 
that is projected on there isn't necessarily moving dynamically with the actors because it is a, it is a single screen. So what the volume does is it originally used, if I, please forgive me if I get this wrong, but what I understand is that in the first season of The Mandalorian, it used the Unreal Engine. And then for subsequent seasons, they've been modifying that with some custom software. I'm not exactly sure of the details, but um, we all know Unreal Engine as an incredible uh, 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 game engine for generating virtual environments on the fly for gaming. Uh, it did that for the volume where it generated the virtual environment to the camera, which means that when the camera is panning around an actor in the volume and there's like multiple levels of detail behind them, let's say there's trees and then there's houses and then way in the distance there's mountains, instead of all those things being just a flat projected image, they move dynamically in relation to each other so that when the camera moves around the actor, the background moves too. And it may even be disconcerting for people who aren't looking through the camera on set because the whole environment is changing just to accommodate what the camera's eye sees. I, again, I want to tell you, I have not been to the volume. Uh, this is all from my reading and from like the, the obsessing I've done about how beautiful this is. And John Knoll, one of the designers, is a good friend of mine and we've chatted about it. But there's ent it's entirely possible that I'm getting huge chunks of this wrong. So please forgive me for uh, facts that I'm not nailing here. And I hope that was somewhat clear about the volume because it is absolutely an incredible game changer. Uh, my friend Fawn Davis has a wonderful film studio down in LA called Fawn Co. And we were just filming down there and Fawn is experimenting. We didn't film with his volume, but he's experimenting with a mini volume uh, and getting some fantastic results with it. Um, like I said, uh, you know, ILM is always customizing and, and refining their pieces, but I think they started out with the first experiments with a bunch of off-the-shelf products, and I, people can too. The idea that computing power has increased enough where one could put a bunch of LED screens behind one and get some really dynamic filming shots in your house for a few thousand dollars, that's, that's astounding. Um, I would love to play around in a volume and people are building them all over the place right now. Uh, I have not yet gotten to play in one and see all the different things that it can do. Uh, but rest assured, I want to someday soon. Um, because it doesn't just, <clears throat> okay, there, here are some of the advantages to the volume. Every time you take a film piece and you post-process it, you're, you're deteriorating its quality somewhat. You are making some compromises. Um, and putting things in camera is always better. It is, I don't think there's an effects human out there who would disagree with me. If you can get it in camera, it's just going to look better than if you have to animate it or mat it or composite it later. Uh, and I'll give you some examples. Um, there are two great movies to look at for this, uh, to compare against each other. One is Batman, the original 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton, and the other is uh, Brazil. Uh, Brazil came out in 1985. Batman came out in 1989. Um, I can't remember who the production designer on Brazil is, which is ridiculous because I've seen it hundreds of times. But Anton First, the incredible designer Anton First, was the designer of Batman. Uh, and he's amazing. And I do believe that in the Batman sets, he was inspired by Brazil. I've never met him or spoken to him, but um, Batman sets are frequently uh, miniatures that are matted against the world. And uh, 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 Brazil's mini Brazil also uses a ton of miniatures. But where Batman does a lot of composite shots, because it's a big blockbuster film, and that was pretty standard for an effects-heavy film in those days, uh, 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 in any day, really, Brazil did almost all of its effects in camera, uh, which was the low-budget way for Terry Gilliam and his team to do it. But when you look at... So, so in Brazil, there's a famous scene of Sam Lowry, the lead, flying in a suit of armor with wings, mechanical wings, and he is flying through this cloud landscape. And... Oh, you know what? I'll compare this to, uh, to, to, to Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Okay, so 
In Brazil, there, is a, there are se several scenes of Sam Lowry, the protagonist, in a suit of armor, mechanical wings, flying through clouds. Now, picture the scene of uh, Luke arriving in Bespin in Empire Strikes Back, and you see his ship flying through the clouds. There are some shots that are absolutely magnificent, and there are some shots where you really can see that the ship is, like, matted into these clouds. In Brazil, there is no uncanny valley of Sam's character flying through the clouds. Because what they did was, instead of animating a model and then compositing it into the set, they actually built like a 12 or 14 inch long figure of Sam Lowry, mechanical, with the costume that he's wearing and mechanical wings and a motor in it that flapped the wings really fast. And they had lead in the arms, so the motor had to work against the wings like this. And then they filmed it at high speed, so when they slowed it down, the puppet looked to be working against the wings and it was in the set that they were filming it in. There was no compositing. I submit that the Sam Lowry flying through the clouds scenes in Brazil are way better looking than uh, the, the effect shots through the clouds of Bespin. Uh, that there are some of those that are uh, just a tad clunky because of the, the, the limitations of compositing. So, Getting it in camera is absolutely critical. And there are shots from The Mandalorian where you're looking at desert reflections in the helmet and they are indoors. Just absolutely blows my mind. It's the kind of thing that you might not notice. The average person might not be like, no, oh, the reflections of the world are in his helmet. But like, as an old effects dude, almost, I was like the first time I saw that, I was like, how are they doing this? Um, I am really grateful to Disney for releasing the gallery uh, and showing how the volume works and the different innovations and ways in which they're using it. Um, I would love to get to the volume someday and do a deep dive, and boy, do I want to play with one. Yeah, someday. A boy can dream. Um, thank you so much, uh, Michael T. I appreciate your question. Again, Tested patrons, uh, your questions are fantastic. If you'd like to find out how to become one, there's a link in the comments below. Thank you guys so much, and uh, I will see you next time.